In this video, we'll talk about adding integers. So before we actually get to the addition, let's talk about this word, integers. So an integer is similar to a whole number. So it's a set of numbers. And the idea is, so if the natural numbers are the set of 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth, we think of just positive whole numbers there. The whole numbers are a set where the only thing we add to the natural numbers here is 0, the idea of nothing, and so on and so forth. So integers add in the negatives. So, for instance, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Another way of thinking about it, and it would continue on in this way, so negative 4, positive 4 would be in the set. Basically, you can think of the integers are the whole numbers and their opposites, the opposites being okay, what's on the other side of zero? That's just another way of thinking about it. So integers are any whole numbers and their negatives. And that's an important distinction to make here. So let's talk real quick, a note on absolute value. So absolute value, this means distance from zero. And a good way to think about this is on a number line. So distance in math is always, always positive. So like for instance, let's say I'm looking at five. Well, five is five away from zero. That means it has an absolute value of five. And likewise, negative five also is five away from zero. So absolute value, we usually denote with these two little lines to the side of it. This is saying absolute value. So the absolute value of positive 5, that's just asking what's the distance 5 is from 0, is 5. And then likewise, absolute value of negative 5 is also 5, because it's also 5 away from 0. So just a quick note on that, that does pop up, and it's worth talking about here with integers. So let's get into some addition here. So for starters, let's just deal with a couple of positive integers, just to review. So 2 plus 3, you're probably thinking, oh, that's definitely 5. No problem there. Now, the reason I'm using this example is to iterate a way of visualizing addition, and then we can ultimately use this for subtraction. Okay, if I start at 0, I started at 2. So I'm going to go over to 2 on the number line. That's my starting point, and then I'm going to add 3. Now, the idea is it's positive, so it's going to move to the right. So I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3 ending at 5. So this can be a neat visual to help you when we start throwing in the negatives. If it's a negative, well, I would move to the left instead of the right. So it can just be a helpful way of iterating how to do the addition, because it gets more complicated as we throw in the negatives. So let's do one with a negative. Let's say we have 2 plus a negative 3. Now, I'm not too sure on this negative thing, but if I go to my visual, Okay, I'm going to go back, there's 0, start at 2, and now in this case, I'm not going to the right 3, I'm going to the left 3. So I'm going to go left, 1, 2, 3. There I am. And I'm at negative 1. So 2 plus a negative 3 is negative 1. Now you might be saying to yourself, hey, that's the same thing as 2 minus 3, and you would be right. These two expressions are the same. They're equivalent. Now, whether you think about it with the equation view or if you go with the visual, either way is fine. I'm just giving you multiple ways to work with here. So let's look at another one that's kind of interesting. So let's look at negative 3 plus 3. So in this case, I'm starting with a negative. So here's my 0. Let's go to the left 3. So negative 3, and then I'm going to go to the right 3. That's what this plus 3 is telling me to do. So to the right, 3. And I end up at 0. Now, with addition, you may notice 
that both of these are opposites. One's positive, one is negative. They have the same absolute value. If that's the case, anytime I add something and it's negative, I always get zero. It's just a worth noting there. This is also a neat example showing you what happens when you start with a negative and add to it.